Coming up on ATV News, a new point system for AU club sports. We'll let you know how teams calculate their points. And renovations are coming to the Terrace Dining Room. Be prepared for some closures next semester. All this and more coming up on ATV News. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Bea Barbosa. And I'm Jay Desmeret. Thanks for joining us. American University has reinstated a way of calculating club sports points and evaluating their standing as a team. Some card check reports. Club sports are a popular way many AU students spend their time. With a total of 26 teams in the club sports program, there's a wide range of opportunities for participation from major sports like volleyball or basketball to more unique ones like esports and taekwondo. This year brought the reinstatement of the compliance point system, which the club sports director Garrett Schmidt explains as a rubric for teams to identify what tasks are expected of them uh, in their executive board, and then to prioritize completion and make sure that they're in good standing with the university. Teams can earn points in many ways like having officers present at training and meetings or getting their team's semester dues deposited by a certain date. It is currently a tight race to the top, with many teams vying to get into the highest five earners to be considered for program of the year, which includes a grant toward team activities. In second place right now is the men's soccer team, AUFC, and their president, AU senior Michael Peakey, shares with us what's going through his mind. You know, when you put a bunch of people together, are all competitive in nature, obviously they're going to want to win it. So you say points, you say compliance next to each other, I'm like, heck yeah. Michael also said how with the recent revamping of AUFC, they were doing a lot of the things required and suggested by the point system already. On the other hand, some teams aren't doing so great when it comes to earning compliance points, even losing some. Though, they shouldn't fret, as not only are there extra credit opportunities, but Garrett thinks of the system as more of a, a carrot than a stick. Um, but unfortunately, teams that uh, are not able to meet the minimum expectations uh, may face like a probationary period mm. where uh, they would have to meet more closely with our office to make sure we meet those minimum requirements. For ATV News, I'm Sam Karchek. If you want to see how many compliance points a certain team has, check out the Google Sheets points tracker linked on the club sports website and the online club sports handbook for more information. The terrace dining room, more commonly called TDR, will close and undergo serious renovations in the upcoming months. A TV's Grace Harman reports. American University students with sentimentality for the terrace dining room, or TDR as it's commonly known, you may want to say your final goodbyes because come mid-April, the university plans to close its only on-campus dining hall for major renovations to be completed by fall 2024. Construction will be completed in two phases. There will be reduced seating during the first phase and a complete closure during the second. I'm here at the Mary Grace Center, where the largest on-campus renovation in nearly four decades is scheduled to begin December 20th. In an email announcement, Chief Financial Officer Bronte Burley-Jones said the spring operations plan will, quote, ensure a continued positive dining experience. I think it's a good change and it'll help build community in TDR, which I think it's lacking. Um, I'm just concerned for it contributing to food insecurity for students on campus. This plan includes a food tent, food trucks, and additional dining dollars to all meal plan holders. They're not really providing extra seating. I guess they're just providing more food options, which is I guess a compensation, but also I feel like the renovations weren't needed. So they, now they're spending extra money on compensation that they didn't even have to spend to, to begin with. So yes, I think it's a fair compensation, but I also think the compensation is unnecessary. The university announced the makeover in a November 15th email. I know there's been a few emails, but I heard about it through other people. So I think there is some things that they can improve on, but for the most part, I think it's fine, yeah. For ATV News, I'm Grace Harmon. 
In last month's Virginia elections, the Democrats took control of the state Senate. Ashley to then interview AU students about how they feel about these changes. While everyone in the country seems to be preparing for the 2024 election, this November's elections offered hints about the outcome of the presidential race. This off-year election, focusing on local and state officials, brought some changes for DC's neighbor, Virginia. Virginia Democrats won control of the state legislature by a slim majority. They maintained control of the state Senate by one seat and also won control of the House of Delegates by one seat. Virginia voters at AU are cautiously optimistic about the results. Kind of is what it is, honestly. <laughs> like, I don't think it could have gone better, but it could have gone worse, I feel like. I mean, I'm, I feel really relieved. I feel like this is like a really good step um, to like, um, hopefully like stop some more like restrictive legislation that's been proposed. And Many Americans were closely watching Virginia's election to see which party would control the state legislature. Governor Glenn Youngkin had proposed a 15-week abortion ban, but voters, including some from AU, made sure their voices were heard. The most important issue to me leading up to the election was just protecting, like, um, women's right to have an abortion. Youngkin's proposed ban will likely not pass through the now Democratic state legislature. This means Virginia will maintain its status as the only southern state to not pass a ban on abortion since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Ashley Totten, ATV News. The community garden will relocate next semester. Currently, the garden is behind Bender Arena, next to the tennis and basketball courts. But with the expansion of the arena for the planned Student Thriving Center, the new building will expand onto the garden. The garden will move between Nebraska Hall and Katzen Arts Center. Construction will start next semester, and club members are planning to replant and rebuild as soon as possible. AU students are more vocal about sexual assault on campus. I attended a protest on campus last month and spoke to students about their feelings and potential next steps. Last month, student activists and campus organizations protested the university's ongoing response to sexual assault and violence on campus. Today, a lot of students came out because of how um, upset they are with AU, especially myself, and how just disappointed we are. I think they just didn't do enough for it, or for any survivors. Just over a year ago, the AU community gathered at the same spot to protest the administration's reaction to an incident of sexual assault in Leonard Hall. We deserve better! In partnership with the Title IX office, AU student government held a town hall at the end of October for students to ask questions and discuss sexual assault and violence on campus. Kimberly Kraska is the education director for No More and It's On Us, two campus organizations focused on combating sexual assault and supporting survivors. She remains hopeful after seeing students gather on the quad. Like the fact that so many people showed up and stayed for the entirety, despite the fact that it's 45 degrees and it's still raining out, um, was really like, it was a great show of support for the survivors on campus. Students and staff are dealing with cold and flu season on campus. We'll bring you some tips for staying healthy. And some students are preparing for fall graduation. This and more coming up after the break. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you prevent wildfires. Dude, I've got this. I've been camping since I was five years old. But I am a camping influencer. You know what, I'll bet you five bucks. Okay. Assistant Smokey, what is the best way to put out a campfire? Mm -hmm. To put out a campfire, drown with water, stir, drown again, then make sure the fire is out cold by feeling with the back of your hand. Wait, really? I'll take the five bucks. Welcome back to ATV. As cold and flu cases rise on campus, ATV reporter Elizabeth Newton reports on how AU keep numbers down. It's that time of year, 
cold and flu season is once again upon us. With the upcoming colder weather and dry air, many students are turning on their fans and air purifiers to try and combat this latest foe. Beyond chicken soup and extra blankets, the Student Health Center recommends getting your flu shot. Some students already have. Yeah, I got my flu shot like in September. Flu shots have been available on AU campus since September. And beyond a shot, AU has a page under Human Resources in the My AU portal with advice on how to stay safe during flu season. Though shots are highly encouraged, it's still possible to get sick even if you're immunized. I think a couple of my friends got me sick earlier this month, and it was really bad, and I had to sit pool for like a week, even though I got a few shots. People should, somewhat, they should be serious about it and get their flu shot to prevent further spread of the flu. As of now, the best measures you can take as a member of the AU community are simply to get your flu shot, wash your hands, and stay home if you feel ill. Elizabeth Knudsen, ATV News. AU's Division I swim and dive team has had an exciting season and doesn't intend to stop after winter break. The team broke three school records during their recent meet at the George Mason Patriot Invitational. Freshman Becca Siegel, a member of the team, says the community and spirit goes beyond just the pool. So whether it's in the library or just hanging out at TDR, like we all have a great group and so we're always with one another and overall just making sure that we're all set and then just having fun, just making sure that uh, we're still a part of a team and because even away from the pool, we're still all friends. The swim and dive team's next meet comes after the break on January 13th, right here at home. Team members say they'll stick to their motto and bring their big eagle energy. We wish them and the rest of AU sports teams the best of luck along in the new year. After a successful end of year showcase, the student-run dance group AU in Motion has been hosting dance classes for all students. Carly Zolmin reports. AU in Motion, American University's largest dance club, is now hosting weekly workshops for students across campus. AU in Motion is an inclusive club that accepts dancers of all levels, from beginner to advanced. No matter their level of experience, dancers are able to drop into these classes. Throughout the year, dancers rehearse, but after the semesterly show, classes are offered for all students on campus, regardless of their experience or if they're in the club. Gabby, a freshman who is in the club, says that the workshops have helped her re-explore her passion for dance. It's been like super welcoming and just everyone is so kind and just like uplifting and I know I just came from like high school where competition is like really really intense and like you always feel pressured where like this I just never feel like that pressured and I can just like have fun and it's made me like really love dance again. Anastasia Menninger taught a beginner intermediate jazz funk class where dancers learned choreography to a Michael Jackson song. Yeah and then your hands are just coming down your body. Stasia has choreographed for three semesters now and shared her reasons as to why. I also think it is an important chance for people to get to experience the choreography of others that they didn't get a chance to throughout the semester. We're often in dances with the same people every week um, and so it's nice to get to see some new faces and meet some new people that way since our club has over 200 people. These workshops foster community and confidence and are a great break from the stress of finals. They will continue for one more week and more information can be found on the AU in Motion Instagram page. For ATV News, I'm Carly Zolman. Despite the library being located in the center of campus, library staff members say not many students use its available resources to the fullest extent. Working on a research paper, AU librarians are here to help, according to Gwendolyn Reese, Director of Research, Training, and Learning for the library. But Reese says students are meeting librarians less and less. The number of students who are utilizing our at-will services to ask for help from a librarian about how to navigate the resources has really dropped dramatically and has not recovered since the pandemic. Reese says she wants more students to meet with librarians one-on-one -on -one to find the best databases, journals, and primary sources. Without that help, Reese says, it can be hard to find resources or know what to use for a project. 
And this can be really difficult to navigate if you're not an expert. So part of the reason to come to us is that we can help you figure out what are the best resources for your particular research project. But students like Junia Brennan Woolley Laria say they've found what they need without librarians' help and haven't met with librarians. I actually probably use the online resources more than I use the physical resources because the library website just has such a great like search functionality and it's very easy to get like, like very specifically what I'm looking for. Senior Lola Robinson says she has found in-depth and specific sources without talking to librarians either. Especially with like technology now, I can just use the online American University Library for most of the articles and stuff, so. Reese says the library tracks the number of people meeting with librarians. The data shows more and more students, like Robinson, not meeting with them, according to Reese. But as finals get underway, Reese says the library is hosting meetings with students to understand why they don't meet with the librarians in person. I would love any feedback about how to get the word out. For ATV News, I'm Caleb Ogilvy. It's looking like this final season is off to a gloomy start. But hopefully we'll see sunny days again soon. And now with the weather, Ashley. We currently have partly cloudy skies today and the highs in the mid 40s. The temperature is expected to increase to near 50 on Thursday and another warmer day on Friday with a high in the low 50s. Expect those cloudy skies to follow us into Saturday, where we, where we will see some rain, with slightly warmer temperatures around the mid-50s. Finally, Sunday should be the best day of the week, with partly cloudy skies and expected high in the mid-50s. Enjoy the weather this week, and happy holidays. Back to you, Jade. Thanks, Ashley. Sunday will be a bright day for many students as they prepare to graduate. I spoke to some of the graduates to learn about their next steps after they leave AU. Many AU students will say the last goodbye to the university during fall commencement. The two ceremonies will take place at Bender Arena and will last approximately two hours and a half. I don't think it'll be like as grand as the spring graduation usually is, um, just because that's where everyone goes. Um, I remember there being like a really long line outside of the gym last year, which was not that fun. So. The hope is that it's not just waiting in a long line in the cold with your family. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we still get like a special moment. Commencement is the last opportunity for undergraduate students to celebrate their time at AU and the memories they have made since their freshman year. I've kind of found my passion of event planning, uh, being an event coordinator for LCDA. Um, which is my dance team that I'm a part of here on campus. Um, that's a big part of my experience here. And I definitely think my time with that dance team is gonna affect me and be with me for the rest of my life. And the people that I've met, um, you know, you come here and you learn about different cultures, different languages, people who aren't even from the States or where you even live. And I think um, that is what I'll always keep with me. Beyond celebration, graduation also means a new start for undergraduate students. January 2024, um, I am lucky enough to be moving back home with my mom, um, and I'm still hearing back from internships right now, so hopefully those come through. Um, but I'll be working regardless of what happens, um, and everyone told me to take at least a year off from your undergrad to grad school, but eventually I do want to go to grad school. Vivek Murthy, the U.S. Surgeon General, will deliver the commencement speech. He will also receive an honorary degree. Congrats to 2023 fall graduates. That's all for today. I'm Bea Rabosa. Et je suis Jade Desmarais pour ATV News. Je vous souhaite de bonnes fêtes de fin d'année et vous retrouve en 2024.